Enchanté, mon chers. How is everyone? I'm really good. I am on my day off. I went to run all my errands. And now I'm in a late night cook. But first, we're going to do our weekly romance oracle message. See what our love lives have in store for us this week. Well, it is safe for us to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. So we've like come out of a huge 16 year karmic cycle that has taught us everything that we know about love and life and death and taxes and all the things in between. And now it's like we've worked through a lot of those like core relationship wounds that were causing instability in our like re relational dynamics and our relational intelligence. We are more emotionally intelligent and resilient and capable than we used to be. And we're more capable within the realm of relationship skills than we used to be. So, but the most important thing of all, I think, too, is the relationship that we've established with ourselves so that we know exactly who we are and we know what our like goals and our purpose is and we can maintain that like authentic identity whilst also allowing like the right people into our lives, right? And so as we date and decide who, you know, is going to continue on with us and who doesn't, uh, you know, we were better at establishing like better choices for ourselves. We're better at being able to maintain our own self, but also not to the point that we have to shut people out. Like, I think we're, we're opening our gates a little bit to let people in because now we know how to decipher who should be coming in and how to pace that and how to slowly let someone earn their way into our lives and how to integrate them in. But like to do it in stages so that it happens in a healthy way, but that it happens, right? And so we've established our identity so that we can maintain that when we start fusing our life with someone that we start to have like a long-term commitment and partnership with. Because we can't get so isolated and set in our ways that we can't imagine like integrating our life with another person, right? You know, it take, it's a fine balance and it's a fine dance. It's a fine balance and dance for all of it, right? To maintain comfort and security, but also like excitement and uh, novelty and eroticism and attraction and, uh, in, you know, excitement and the like desire to want to make an effort for one another. All of that takes effort and it's different skills. You know, the polarity of masculine and feminine energy within a relationship, like even within same sex relationships, there's a more assertive one and a more passive one, you know? So there's so much that is at play at any given time, plus being able to like communicate and to know what you, who you are and what your needs are and be able to express those to another person and to be able to care about what their needs are, right? And, and to have the capacity to be open to intimacy and to be able to participate in intimacy. And so we can't really do that unless we've done some work to open ourselves up and to get to know ourselves better right? It's not just leaving it up to some other person to like come into our life and sweep us off our feet and like turn all these things on in us that have never been awakened before. It's like we need to like do this for ourselves and not expect somebody else to be the person that comes in and does that. So we fall in love with us and we're in love and then that attracts more love in and other people's love towards us. Other people that authentically love us and who we are are automatically like resonant and they draw closer. Whereas people who aren't really meant for us when we're being like truly authentic, they're going to be repelled. And so that, that gets rid of those problems. It's so funny because I kept seeing this when I was shuffling, pay attention to red flags. So the signs are cautioning you. So as we are starting a new era and new cycles, 
this is sort of our first time out, you know, in the new self uh, suit where we're trying out different approaches to having relationships and entertaining suitors and courting and dating and, and all of that. And so this is the first time that we get to meet people and start interacting and butt up against our old patterns and our old fears and insecurities. And this is where we see them, they're gonna be triggered, but we get to be like, oh no, I recognize that. I feel the muscle memory. I feel the reflex to want to go back into that behavior or back into that, those old like ruminating obsessive thought patterns or controlling or anxious or whatever it is. You're like, no, I've done a lot of work to transcend and come past that. And so that doesn't have a hold on me anymore. So I'm going to choose differently. I'm going to choose to shift my consciousness. I'm going to sh choose to shift my thoughts and I'm going to, I'm going to choose to cultivate different feelings. <coughs> we may not have control over our initial thoughts and our initial emotions, but what we do have control over is what we latch on to and what we feed and what we choose to continue to put our attention on, right? So watching out for those, not only the red flags and others and really paying attention to it and just avoiding the need for that lesson, right? If you see these red flags, it's like, don't go there. It's like not, not attractive, not fun, too tiring, <laughs> over it, <laughs> got the t-shirt, have done that and don't need it anymore. And so we're, we're like glad to stay away from the, those outside red flags coming in. But now it's like also learning how to be strong and overcoming our own tendencies, like the red flag, uh, kind of like warnings within ourselves. What is this? Past life relationship, you have known each other before. So perhaps someone is going to be coming into your life soon and maybe you've never met them before, but maybe you've met them that you know them from other lives. And so it, that's, you know, when you meet that, those soul connections where you're just like, oh, it feels like we've known each other forever and I feel like I've known you in another life and you get to like be those people that, you know, you just connect on that deep level like that could be coming in for us. We can also right now be resolving like past life relationships so that we're free to go forward in this new cycle without looking over our shoulder and feeling like those strings and those cords. So now would be a good time to, like we're in the waning moon right now. And so it'd be a good time to cut cords and do cleansing uh, rituals and purging rituals, like cleaning your aura with holy smokes and taking salt baths and putting oils and things in your baths to like purge people out of your energy field. Using herbs and uh, botanicals that are uh, geared towards like cleansing and exorcism would be good for this. Like rosemary and cedar are good. Um, hyssop and sage. Uh, okay. Amazing. Super fun. We'll get more insight into this. We'll pull some tarot cards from the Tarot of the Psychic Heart by John Holland. I really love that tarot deck because it's sort of like a, it's not exactly a classic tarot. It doesn't have all of the court cards, but it's got the pip cards and the major arcana cards, and it's all geared specifically through the lens of how we approach relationship. Passion. Ooh, I love this. I love these like enraptured like couples here. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Now, we're actually in the culmination of Sukkot right now called Simcha Torah. And it's like we've reached the end of the journey through the Torah for the, the, the 365 day period of the year. And we've started again in Bereshit, in Genesis. Every year we do this journey through the Torah and it's a journey through the inner process, but it's also a remembrance of the, the Israelites' journey. And this isn't just like uh, Hebrew-centric or about genetics. Like the Israelites are people who wanted to follow God and be, become like God. And so we are, it's like the, the label of the yolk that you take on your consciousness and your desire to be more like the creator. Uh, that is the Israelites. 
So we are in the culmination of the third of the High Holy Holidays. And the whole thing of today was just to be in like joy and abundance and uh, like the highest state, the highest vibration you can keep your mind in and be in gladness and gratitude and appreciation because it's like that high vibration allows you the affinity with the light of the creator to be one with the creator. And so it's like you, the Shina is the Holy Spirit. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit that shows mercy on us and favor and blessing and pours blessing down onto us. And so this force wants to give and share with us, but it can't connect with us if we aren't happy, if we aren't in joy. And so we, um, we can have that inner joy radiating within, even if we are in times of grief and in sorrow and in sadness, we can have that inner abiding peace and fulfillment and joy and acceptance that keeps that around even when we are being honest about our rage or our anger or our grief or our sadness. Like we as spiritual seekers know that we are com complex and that we can manage to hold a paradox and we can hold joy in one hand and sorrow in the other and maintain um, a juxtaposition between the two. So passion. So this is a good day to connect with what you feel passionate about. Think even if you didn't get to do that today. Just think about things that make you that you're you're passionate about, that you feel passionate about, that bring you joy, that bring you um, excitement, right? Um, the deep things in life and the trivial things in life. I got so excited today because so I'm like a fashion nut, and I don't have like designer stuff. It's not that kind of fashion, but like just pieces, like classic, great, unique pieces for my wardrobe. I like to collect over time. And I needed a pair of sequins bloomers, as every woman does, high-waisted golden sequins bloomers. And I just had this ping the other night. I've been looking for them to, like, wear under something that might be, like, dressy and short and flirty, but you need to, like, have something on, over your underwear, whatever. And so been looking around and I couldn't find like a pair that I was thinking of in my mind and something just told me like get online the other night and look and do a search quick google search and what do you know on Poshmark somebody had the set from Nasty Gal in my size and it was like a, a, a gold sequins tube top that was like strapless and then the high-waisted like sequined um like bloomer panty kind of thing. It looks like a bathing suit for like a cocktail party or something. And it is like the cutest thing ever. And it showed up and it's just like this classic iconic thing. And it's just the best. And so I got so excited and I was like, I don't know, like I'm going to find some reason, <laughs> some every way I can to wear and incorporate this thing into my wardrobe. But it was very, I don't know, it's very like backstage, like where I'm with the band or like Sgt. Peppers or something like that. But it just filled me with joy and I'm getting my Halloween costume and it's a, a skeleton suit and I've always wanted to be a skeleton for Halloween so like that excites me and I've always wanted like a little like bob wig of like some kind of like fun color and I'm getting one I don't know it's just like little things like that that I'm really excited about right now um, that I can take such joy in such small things. Like I got some pumpkin candles and just different things like that. I got um, floating like Harry Potter candles to put on my front porch for Halloween. I'm going to leave them up through Christmas, but they're going to be really cute. So just like things that you can connect with that bring you joy, that bring you a sense of romance, even if it, it's, especially if it's not connected to another person, right? If you can feel this with yourself, without having some person have to do that for you, then it, then it perpetuates this sense of having and not lacking through someone else not being here to mirror that for you. So when you can do it for yourself, like for instance, this woman named Shelly Bullard, I, I kind of like her suggestions about like manifesting a partner into your life because She'll guide you through like not having like a specific person like she does have like tips on manifesting a specific person, which I don't like I don't agree with because I think it messes with someone's free will. But just if you're manifesting a partner thinking in terms of 
oh, I wonder what me and my partner are going to do later. Like, are we going to cook? Are we going on a date? Like just things like that, where you would start incorporating that person into your thoughts about your day and how your day would go. She's, she would say like, I would pretend when I was at the grocery store that I was shopping for me and my husband. And like, she wasn't married. She didn't, well, wasn't even dating anyone. She didn't even know anybody that she like particularly was interested in. But this woman just got like so deep in that state of feeling that like that person was already there and they were making plans and stuff like that, that like she actually ended up meeting this person within three weeks of like really going like hardcore into these kind of like manifestation tactics where she would feel the the romance and the passion and like the, the comfort and the security of that person already being in her life in little ways like that. Like, ooh, I wonder what me and my honey you're doing later you know what what is he gonna want for dinner you know things like that like and then she would just feel that person in her life and she would think about the essence of that that partner that she wanted and like how it would feel with them around and like what their energy was like and she would just imagine that that energy near her and so using that uh those those practices I really do think that they're that that is biblically like backed up because the Bible like tells us to pray uh, as though this has already happened. Like it's already a done deal. Like pray with gladness and certainty and gratitude. All right, let's get some more insight into it is safe for us to love. Like what, what more can we know about this? Change your focus. So five of cups. So five of cups is an energy of being like focused on the past and maybe what went wrong and maybe like being kind of haunted by disappointment and dis- and sorrow and things kind of blowing up or like maybe you're still haunted by like something somebody said to you that was cruel. You know, maybe you were with someone that like slowly and gradually kind of put you down over time or made you like second guess yourself or caused you to feel shame about certain parts of yourself and that caused you to bury those parts deeper in the shadow because that just reinforced your fear that those things made you unlovable, right? So now we're having to shake that off and really try to let it go and not let it affect the way that we feel about ourselves because we are healing our self-worth. And that self-worth is going to be the thing that makes us like ready for the next relationship to come in. It's safe to call in love because if we're, our self-worth is deep, then we're going to attract in something that matches that. Whereas if our self-worth is low, then we're going to be attracting in things that match a lower self-worth. And so we're going to be tested with things that aren't quite right for us. And so the key here is to stand strong. Don't focus on how the past is. Don't feel like you're like running out of options and you have to settle. Like focus on the future. Focus on the positive. Focus on you like aligning with your authenticity and not settling for less than what's true for you and authentic for you, right? And so it's safe for you to love, but only if you are making like authentic and honest choices for yourself. So if you're like settling for someone who isn't treating you quite well or isn't quite right, like maybe like, like for instance, you think it's trivial to like really hold out for a sense of humor in someone. But like you've got someone that's like there that's like got a lot of the other qualities you're looking for, but they're just not like fun. They're not like super funny and they don't get your humor and there's not like a lot of that going on. And you might feel like, oh, like I I feel bad that I'm like being too picky. And But that might be like something that is like a core need for you and you could be miserable without that, right? So like be authentic to yourself and also like, don't settle for something just because you think that, like, it's, you know, like, if it's something that's deeply important to you, have faith that the creator knows that what you, what you need and what you want, and that will be there. And it's up to us in the meantime to be able to discern and be able to say no to the people who aren't a match, right? Okay, so change your focus. Don't, um, don't feel insecure because of the past. Like, things are different now. You're different. You're 
you have more confidence, you have more charisma, you have more everything. And so it's, you're a different person than you used to be and you have more strength. And so the lies of the past that someone projected on you, you can see now that that was them. That was their insecurity and their anger and their pain and their misery being spewed onto you, but it doesn't mean that it was true. So pay attention to red flags manifest. So magician came up. So be careful about the ways that we can be uh, the trickster in our own lives. So what I have found is that the signs will show up and sometimes they're coming from our angels and our positive spirit guides that are there for our highest good. There's also these dark angels that follow us around and they mess with us too. And there's an opposing side that's kind of trying to get us distracted or get us to make the wrong choices. And so I think that they use the signs as well. And I think that they know us just as well as our positive angels do. And so they know the ways that they can kind of like confuse us. So I think that there is some criteria <clears throat> that if we start seeing signs around a person that we know isn't good for us, um, we can still discern whether or not that that sign is coming from the light or from the opposition, right? From the opponent. So <clears throat> I think that that is where we have to pay attention to red flags and others, right? Because we can manifest and manipulate energy to get what we want. But in the end, we may not be happy when we've got what we thought we wanted so bad, right? We, we think that in our mind, like, oh, I know what's best for me. It's like back to the whole, like, trying to manifest a specific person. It's like you think that you know that you are, that you know best. And that you and this person are, that's just the destiny. That's just the, this is for you. And, and this is just meant to be. And then you try to force something with that person or manipulate the energy in the universe to like deliver an opportunity with that person. And if it's not really meant for you, it's just going to bring chaos. It's not going to be right. You're taking energy from a source that's not meant to be yours. And so if you're trying to like force the situation, then you might find out that that person isn't the person that you thought that they were, or you're not compatible in the way that you thought that they, that you would be. Or once the tension has been released, it's like, there's not anything behind it. It's just like kind of superficial. So I would say, don't try to make something right just because you think you want it and because you're ready to make something happen. You know, so many times we can get caught up in this world of trying to follow these dating tactics and trying to, to follow these things, methods for success. And so we get so focused on making sure that we have the successful date, that the date goes well. Do they like me? We want them to like us. We want them to call us back. And it's like, we never stop to think like, no, do I want this date to work out? Like, maybe it's not working out. That's good. Like, uh, do I want this person to call me back? Like, maybe I don't. Like, we're so focused on winning that we don't realize that sometimes we're trying to force situations that we don't, we're not going to want. Like, just because <clears throat> it's like we, we wanted to not fail or we wanted to be successful in our tactic, right? So don't get caught up in like the, the scheme and don't get caught up in the energy and the excitement of something and not really pay attention to what's really there, right? And just be honest with yourself, right? And then, oh, oh my gosh, with that card, literally came out refusing to see. That is like refusing. Okay, so this is a perfect example. We were just talking about like old patterns coming back around, right? And then like being at the end of this huge era and at the beginning of another one and having similar situations come back to test our strength, to test our self-worth and to help us like use our new wisdom and our new consciousness to try to meet this in a different way than we ever have, right? And so pretend like somebody from the past that you had like a big thing for and that you always carried a torch for you always had hopes for like but it was this person was never good for you maybe they had narcissistic tendencies or maybe they were just kind of like a player in and out and they just like to like 
get the attention, but they didn't have any intention. And so they felt comfort in you and like thought that you were, you know, a great idea to give them energy and oh, the, this person makes me feel good about myself. So I'm gonna keep going back when, you know, when I, when I need to feel like a boost of self-confidence or, oh, I wanna talk about my, my problems. So I will go back to this person who has insight, right? And they give me comfort, they make me feel better. And so maybe you perceive that person coming back to you and like opening up and connecting with you as like something that is like a mutual uh, connection, but really in their mind, it's just more of like a, a selfish, like I need to, I need to fill up. So I need to go to a filling station. So I'm going to go fill my empty love tank off of this person's aura and off of this person's heart and off of this person's passion and off of this person's energy. And so there's an attraction there and you've bonded with this person because of the exchange of the investment that you've put into them. And yet they have no intention of, of taking it any further with you ever. And so they just keep circling back and circling back. And every time they do, you're left thinking, you're left in a limerent state of rumination of like, oh, I, you know, I get high on their energy. I love being around them. They're intoxicating. I, that we have this like unique, deep connection. Like why, why don't they see, why don't they see, you know, and I want this to happen. And it's like, what we're not seeing is these red flags that this person just, <clears throat> because they have attention for us, but just because they pay attention to us doesn't mean they have intentions for us. And so Matt Hussey's book, Love Life, one of the like core points that he brings up <clears throat> in like a whole section is that in uh, uh, attention is not intention. And so we might have refused to see that in the past or we didn't realize it like we do now. And so now we see, we're like, oh, I see that the truth about these people and I see the truth about what was going on in these patterns, these enmeshed codependent patterns where somebody, you know, wanted my energy, wanted my, uh, you know, admiration. Like I just had somebody recently that like ran, I hadn't talked to in many, many years who resurfaced, like just started sending me these messages that were just kind of like, call me, call me. So here's my number, like call me. And then it was just like, okay, what's going on? And then I didn't notice until later. And then I got in touch with them and they were like, tell me about like that their marriage had fallen apart. And that they just immediately were just like trying to like get me to pay attention to them and show them like, a, I don't know, like give them energy. And they didn't even like, they kept bombarding me like picture. Like at first I was like, Oh, hi. Like hello from the past, you know? Oh, great. To see, you. get caught up. Then it just became clear that this person was like wanting me to get them, give them reassurance, give them validation, give them attention. Like, just give them energy. And they never even asked how I'd been or what was new or what I was up to or where I live now or if I had a boyfriend or anything. They just showed up and demanded that I start giving them attention. Now, if I hadn't have healed any of my empathic nature or codependent tendencies to feel like I needed to take care of people or, oh, I feel bad. Like, you know, I even felt their energy and felt like this nostalgia and was like, we should get together. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm picking up on their thing. Like, I don't, do I want to get, no, no like not really. Like I have a lot, <laughs> I have a lot going on and unless like, I'm just like actually attracted to this person. I just don't have time. Right. So it's like, so at the past I might've refused to see what was really happening. And I might have gotten swept up in the situation and who knows how far it would go before I realized it was like a huge mistake, right? So it's like sometimes we just have to be able to open our eyes and see the truth of what's really happening instead of just getting wrapped up and catching a fish, right? So seeing the red flags in others and seeing them in ourselves and seeing those past like um, patterns coming up. Okay. 
So, and if you're the person, if you're a person who's recently gotten divorced and trying to reach out, it's like, don't think that I'm talking about you because there is actually uh, multiple, several people in that same category that had reached out to me over the course of this year. So I'm just like, what am I, the freaking clinic for, <laughs> like, no. So this was the pattern and it just kept coming. So there could be, you know, it could be a dozen of you, who knows? All right. So crown chakra and past life relationship. So our crown chakra is like our open portal to our connection to divine downloads and inspiration. And so this is like, the light of that of the creator coming in and becoming like, oh, I know this, I, I have an idea, or I have insight to how this is connected. I can see how these things are connected. So I feel like this is like a spiritual connection, a, sp the, a connection that has a spiritual base to it. Um, and it's a divinely inspired and guided and blessed connection. Let's see one more card about the past life relationship. What past life relationship was have to do? Okay, so success and growth. So eight of wands. So something that can start off with some communication and they can grow legs and take off possibly very quickly. So take your time as this is developing because if something doesn't take its time as it's growing and becoming then someone that can't like really appreciate because they don't have time to like invest properly and feel properly invested. But also if men like, for instance, specifically men push something to happen really fast and they want every, they want to be completely engulfed in you. And you're just like, well, I'm just doing what they wanted. And like three months later, they'll be like, Oh my God, everything happened so fast. Why, how have we gotten here so quick? So like, even though it's their idea and they're going to push everything forward really fast, and even if it's someone who's meant to be with you, like they're still gonna hit that wall in three months if you like completely like immersed yourself into one another too quickly. They're gonna have a panic. They're gonna be like, oh my God, this all happened so quickly and I wasn't thinking and I got ahead of myself and now we're so much further in than I intended. So if you go slow, you're gonna arrive at um, a further into like a like a relationship that has like real material to it faster and closer to a commitment than if you like rush in and have that like false sense of intimacy because that 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 speed is what gives them that panicked feeling because they don't feel like they made like they're like a like a free will choice they feel like they got reactive so even though it's fun to go at a, at a high speed pace, <laughs> it's better to pace them and slow it down. You'll get where you want to go faster if you go slower. And then passion, uh, daydream, uh, like daydreams and decisions. So <clears throat> this makes me think of like fantasy and maybe something that you've always wanted, like the kind of relationship you've always wanted is here. So it's like, think back and connect with the feeling of the, the relationship that you used to imagine for yourself that you would get excited about, right? Before you might have felt wary or like feeling like, oh, this might not happen or this might not exist. So get excited, kind of reconnect with those fantasies, right? But don't get lost in illusion or delusions, right? There's a difference. So you can hold out for the essence of that person that you can imagine for yourself, but you don't have to project like delusions or fantasies on specific individuals, right? So there's difference there. So hold out and start making decisions and choices that create a passionate relationship or the, the, to create, hold the space for a passionate relationship or create the container for a passionate relationship. Um, be intentional as you make these choices but don't get completely overwhelmed and indecisive either. Like we can run the risk. Like I feel like we should really like connect with these, these dreams and these visions thoroughly 
and like be really clear on what what makes us feel passionate like what we're passionate about and what like our, our core values are um, but also like we don't need to get lost in fantasy or lost in like looking at, at the choices and never making a decision right because I think that's part of the d decision overwhelm of this culture of having so many options and so many choices with dating apps and everything these days that we feel like we can't make a choice. Like we can't make a decisive cho choice and just choose someone because we're like, oh, well, I, I want to keep exploring my options. It's like we can't keep exploring our options forever. So at some point, like we need to know truly like what is our dream vision of love? What is our dream partner? Um, what does that look like and feel like, you know, in our mind and in our imagination? And then be decisive about choosing people who have affinity with that, right? But don't get stuck in analysis paralysis and don't feel like you want to explore your options forever because at some point, be having um, commitment is about choosing someone to just commit with and the highs and lows of emotions and love and um, the passion are going to come and go and it's something that you have to keep working on and keep cultivated but at the end of the day no matter who you choose even if it's the right person for you all of that's going to wear off in time and it's going to come back and it's going to go up and down but it's always going to be it's always going to require a continuous choice a continuous decisive choice to be committed and to stay committed and to remain in that commitment you know when times you, you're gonna come to face with times where it's gonna be like oh this is very stale um i feel like you know there's i don't know you know have we you know there's there's gonna be times where it's not gonna be glamorous and it's not gonna be exciting and you're gonna have to make it that way again or it's better if you kind of keep it main, you know maintain that it's easier to maintain than to have it gone and have to start back over from scratch. But times will be up and down, but it's the person that you choose to continue to commit with for the long term. Okay, I'm talking in circles now. So that'll be all for tonight. We will be back tomorrow for our weekend reflection message where we will just be like, kind of rounding out all of the messages and lessons that we've been getting through the week. So it's safe for us to love. We've got to change our focus from the past, you know, get over those old echoes of pain and disappointment and the harsh things that people may have projected onto us. Watch out for red flags. Um, don't let yourself fall prey to like believing your own lies or believing someone else's don't believe what you want to believe just because you want that to be the truth right don't refuse to see what's right in front of you pay attention to the red flag so you don't have to cycle through painful lessons anymore we really can live a very different life and learn with ease but we also have to make those choices we have to start acting better y'all we gotta act right okay and then success and growth and past life and divine inspiration. So past life, uh, like a soulmate connection or like a, like someone that we knew that we feel like we've known for many lifetimes is coming. Um, this could be a divinely in like, ordained relationship and can have a lot of spiritual foundation and growth within it and I think that like this can move and progress quickly so we have to be careful to maintain a healthy pace and yeah get clear and if this is the right thing showing up don't hesitate because you want to keep exploring your options right at some point we've got to be really decisive so think about like ask yourself like is this uh you know can I, does this light, light up my soul? Does this light up my heart? Does this feel expansive? Like I can grow here, right? All right, and then at, that, at some point you have to make a choice. All right, y'all, enchanté. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. 
like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.